everybody knows stress is bad, right? But people don't usually understand the impact stress has in our bodies, like where it acts and what it causes in our body. And stress, I would venture to say that it is the greatest leverage point for your health above diet and above exercise. Really, stress management is crucial. And it unfortunately, I see a lot of resistance, not resistance, but just people just blowing it off. Like, nah, yeah, yeah, I'm stressed, but I'm just like that. Ooh, it, it really does improve your health if you work on it. And it's, it's, if, if your diet is on point, great. If your exercise is on point, awesome. But if you're stressed, you're still going to go through all of this that I'm going to talk about. So let's first understand that the body does not um, differentiate acute stress, like a war, like a car accident, like a fight, from chronic stress, from work, from family relationships. Okay. So the response that the body gives you is adequate. It's to protect you. So how does it respond? So when you're, when it senses that you're in danger, it's going to dilate your pupils so you can see better. Um, it's going to make your heart beat faster so that you can get blood to your muscles and make you run faster and better. Um, your, your glucose goes up because you need more fuels to your cells. Um, your triglycerides go up for the same reason. Your proteins are broken down, unfortunately, from your muscles to give you more energy as well. They become glucose. Um, what else happens? This The blood gets thicker so that if you cut your arm or somebody bites you or an animal bites you or something, you don't bleed out. So all that is to protect you, correct? And then all the blood that is here in your GI tract gets shunted out. Obviously, it's not time to digest anything. It's time for you to run. So it goes back, you know, the blood is diverted to your heart, to your brain, and to your muscles. So all that is the acute response to stress. The thing is, your body can't shut it down if it's all if you're in chronic stress. And since it doesn't know how to respond to chronic stress, it responds just like it would with acute stress. So long-term stress with a lot of adrenaline, with a lot of cortisol, will cause you to gain visceral fat. So it will deposit fat over here. It'll make you lose your lean body mass because it's going to be catabolic. It's going to prevent you from gaining muscle mass. Um, it's going to disrupt your sleep. It's going to... Um, get you diabetic or even or maybe pre-diabetic because your glucose is always going to be elevated. Your body is always going to be responding with more and more insulin and you know that a lot of insulin um, causes damage to your arteries and nerves and stuff like that. So um, it also changes your microbiota. This blows my mind. So the cortisol, excess stress, both adrenaline and cortisol, will kill the good guys, bifidobacterium and lactobacillus, and will promote the growth of the bad guys, gram-negative bacteria, um, that are Yersinia and Pseudomonas. And they um, have this thing called a lipopolysaccharides. It's, it's on their cell membrane, um, and that's very toxic to the body. It's called endotoxemia, and your body ramps up inflammation when it sees that. It can even ramp up autoimmunity when it sees that in your blood. It'll decrease your T3, which is your active uh, thyroid hormone in the cells, making your uh, metabolism slower, so making you gain weight that way as well, and even feeling more fatigued too when you have very low T3, you're kind of sluggish. And it, and it ramps up your reverse T3, which is like a hibernation hormone. So it puts you in um, a low, low metabolic, meaning you're going to be burning very few calories. And so anything you eat will make you fat. Um, it will shrink your hippocampus. And this is very important for you to know. The hippocampus is the area where we store our memories. We retrieve our memories. And high stress has been correlated with very high risk of dementia not only in alzheimer's but just regular your plain old dementia so this is very important it will put your immune system down too because it's diverting all the energy and all the nutrients from your immune system so you get more prone to getting infections getting sick not recovering well from whatever sickness you have um, so it even causes osteoporosis, dysglycemia, which means uncontrollable blood sugar. And um, so that's what it is. And so it causes all that and it also disrupts your sleep. And so your hormones are all going to be out of whack because all the hormones 
that we have the sex hormones, okay? So testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and its derivatives, um, DHEA, um, all are produced by a mother molecule that comes from cholesterol and it's called pregnenolone. Well, pregnenolone is also the mother molecule for cortisol. If you're constantly needing to make more cortisol because your body thinks that you're in fight or flight, all the pregnenolone is shunted down to make cortisol and there is no not enough left to make your sex hormones and your androgens and all that so your hormones get all out of whack just because of stress so that's why I say when you move your stress when you manage your stress um, it's a great it's, it's a great leverage point for your health and you can't avoid stress you can't avoid traffic you can't avoid a bad boss you can't avoid relationship problems but you can become more resilient to stress and you can provide your body um, with nutrients and ways to cope better with the stress and this is what we're going to going to go into next so the first thing is for you to know your purpose so people that have purpose are less stressed because they have a purpose right they have a reason to get out of bed and they have something that drives them and they have that calmness that comes um, from believing that they're here on purpose not just going through the motions um, so you do want to have one at least one stress management technique even if you're not a very nervous anxious you're under stress have a, a technique that you use every day and it can be anything that works for you things that have been studied was um, journaling singing humming breath work meditation you know the gist just choose one and do one really doesn't have to be a lot just five minutes a day would be great amazing um, exercise exercise because of the endorphins will help with stress Tai Chi and yoga have been studied meditation is amazing it conforms it, it changes the structure of your brain it gives you more gray matter which is more neurons so more function in your brain it helps um, lower cortisol substantially and it gives you so much more resilience for stress so remember I think I said maybe on the stories about you sitting with discomfort so whenever you feel irritated I don't know angry anxious sit with it don't eat to eat to um, numb it drink to numb it use drugs to numb it use sex to numb it buy online to numb it sit with it and identify that and that next time when you feel that your reaction will be much better so that increases your resiliency just you sitting with that discomfort and trying to like put it out on paper or draw or paint or talk to somebody about it just really try to understand what's going on rather than just trying to stuff your face with with anything to cover it up and not deal with it um, what else uh, acupuncture has been studied prayer has been studied all to improve your resiliency to stress journaling like I said N being in nature so forest bathing has been studied um, and it's interesting it makes your blood pressure go down like substantially when you're in there uh, grounding so having being barefoot on a natural soil so grass earth sand um, contemplation of nature contemplation of a sunset a mountain anything outside in nature and being mindful of that of course not just looking and thinking about work but being mindful of everything you do so when you're brushing your teeth try to focus on brushing your teeth and not your shopping list when you're taking a shower really feel the water smell the smells feel the temperature and that is what mindfulness is it doesn't have to be any esoteric thing it's just being present in the moment so you know feeling this desk right here feeling that I'm talking to you and all this is very is being present in the moment um, and then in the nutrition part you can supplement your body with vitamin C because your adrenals have a very high content of vitamin C and it deplete and it uses up a lot of vitamin C to produce cholesterol when it's very stressed so giving your body enough vitamin C even supplementing with vitamin C a lot of antioxidants so those beautiful colors the oranges the purples the reds the greens having a lot of that in your diet will help counteract the effects of stress which causes oxidation and aging so you don't want that um b complex excuse me b complex vitamins so they are just cofactors for everything in your body so you really need those and you deplete the, those more when you're stressed so having a good complex b um, magnesium is the rel relaxation mineral so epsom salt baths but also magnesium pills can help 
in moments of a lot of stress. We deplete magnesium a lot when we're stressed. Um, essential oils, lavender, myrrh, and chamomile will help. Lavender has been studied even in like ICUs and stuff like that to reduce cortisol and help people heal better. Um, teas that are very good are passiflora, um, lavender, chamomile, and ashwagandha teas, Tulsi tea as well. So then ashwagandha um, and, and Tulsi brings me to the next topic, which is the adaptogens. So adaptogens are substances that balance and restore um, your hormones. So if it's too high, it brings it down to a middle, but it also if it's too low, it kind of brings it up. So it modulates. It does not does, you know, up or down. And this is ashwagandha, rhodiola rosa, holy basil, which is the Tulsi, Panax ginseng, maca, 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 yeah, maca, um, cocoa, even cocoa. 40 grams of cocoa, three little, two little squares per day, and that helps as well. It has to be dark though, over 70% cacao content. Um, so these are the plants that will help. And then finally, I would like to say that belonging to a group and asking for help and having support in a community, it doesn't have to be family. Um, <laughs> we know that we don't choose family and sometimes people don't have the best support system in their family but you can have friends and community and church people and and really being uh open to asking for help and this is a topic that is difficult for me because i like helping others but i don't really t i feel uncomfortable i feel like i'm bothering it's not something like very um proud or anything of me it's just that i feel like i'm bothering people but learning to ask for help you know, asking somebody to go take care of your kids for you for a little bit. Um, ask somebody to come and cook you a meal or come and help you clean the house or help you do an errand, anything. But ask for help and, and try to belong to a tribe because that has been shown. The blue zones are famous for the longevity and the health, but um, a common factor of that is being in community and having people to lean on and not carry the burden yourself. So this is what I had for you today. I hope you consider this and really analyze if in your, in your life you are stressed and kind of not dealing with it. And just incorporate one, try one. Try it, try it for like a week and see if it gets better. And if, you, if I could pick one to ask you to try, I think it would be meditation because it's, it, the studies are just amazing on meditation. You can PubMed it and, and read to your pleasure if you would like, but um, trust me, it's, it's been, it's very effective. So that was it.